because sometimes we look for all the wrong things in God's house. I think you ought to be more spiritual than you are deep. When I was in seminary um, at Colgate Divinity School, um, we learned all these big words, ecclesiastic. We learned some big words. My preaching professor said, look, um, Al, and he was, but he's talking to us black preachers. He said, um, when you exegete a text, exegete was a big word, when you examine the text, he says, that's for you, but not for the congregation. He says, that's for you to divide the word in the correct way, but then deliver it to the congregation in the way that they can understand it. Because I've, I've been in some congregations, and I hear some preachers missing some words, and I, I look at people and say, what did he say? What is that? What did he say? And then they for, forget what it's all about. Come on, come on, y'all. Let's, let's make it plain so that people can understand it. So I just, I got a plain plan for you today that's straight out the Bible, if you don't mind. There, in the, in the Gospel of Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 13 through 16, the Gospel of Matthew, verses 16 through 13. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 16. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do they say that I am, the Son of Man? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You may be seated. I don't want to talk about my plan. I want to talk about God's plan for the Mount Carmel Baptist Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus responded and says, Peter, you did not respond from your own self. God gave you that word. And then upon this rock, I will build my church. And he said, the gates of hell not black folk, not white folk, not Donald Trump. The gates of hell will prevail. It was the church that Jesus gave the Great Commission. The church is unbreakable. The church will always stand. It is through the church that Jesus brings the Messiah of salvation. It is the church that Jesus will return to. And it is the church that Christ, we are committed to. With all of its faults and with all of its frailties, the church will stand until Jesus comes again. Somebody ought to say amen. The church is not perfect because it is run by imperfect people. I don't know why we are looking for a perfect church because the minute you step in it, it's no longer perfect. Jesus said in this text, that the gates of hell would not 
prevail against it. The first part of this series this Sunday, I would like to lift up God's plan for the Mount Carmel Church. First point today, write it down. God is looking for a transformed membership. God is looking for a transformed membership. Mount Carmel, if we are to survive, if we are to go into this new year, a new people, a people of hope, a people of love, we need to be transformed. This text clearly speaks to our transformation. Every member of the Mount Carmel Baptist Church must be a transformed individual if this church is, is to survive. I am not saying survive in this place, but wherever God shall send us, we need to be transformed. We must be a congregation who walks in faith in Jesus Christ. Let's look at this text for just a minute in verse 13. Jesus asks two questions. Jesus says, who do they say that I am? And then he turns to the disciples and asks, who do you say that I am? This question is asked in a place called Caesarea Philippi. Church, I need to ask you today as the church, as the Mount Carmel Baptist Church, not who do you say they say he is, but who do you say he is? Those of you who Christ have been with all this time, have walked with, who's healed, who's brought you through a mighty, from a mighty long way, who do you say he is, the one who has brought you this far along the way, the one who has blessed you, kept you. Who do you say he is? If we are to be transformed, we need to be able to answer that question individually, not corporately. Who do you say he is? This, understand where he said this. Can I teach for just a moment? The Bible says he entered the region of Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi was the bed of idol worship. Every country that took over Israel, God's people, built idol gods in Caesarea Philippi. The Romans, the Babylonians, the Syrians, uh, the Greek, they all built their gods in Caesarea Philippi. And now... Those gods, the, they have crumbled. The stones have crumbled. They are but dust in that region. God, Jesus enters that region and asks the question, now in the midst of all of these gods, in the midst of this dust, in the midst of these crumbled rocks, who do you say that I am? The, Jesus stood on these rocks getting ready to declare that he was the rock. And he asked them this question. Who do they say I am? But who do you say I am? You know what? The Lord understands that who they think Jesus is. But, but Jesus wants to know who do you say I am? Peter shouted out, you are the Messiah you are the Christ, he said, the son of the living God. One version says you are the Messiah. The word Messiah means you are the anointed one. Then he said you are the son of the living God, which means God in the flesh. Speaks to his deity. Yeah, you, you know, Peter answered this question is, is the way we should answer that question. Lord, we know who you are. You are the Messiah. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. 
You are the anointed one to save us from our sins, and you are the son of the living God. Can I, can I continue to teach? He says, you are the living God. If you go back to the Gospel of John, beginning in the Gospel of John, John says, in the beginning was the word. And I don't care what version of Bible you have, that word will always be capitalized. W, capital W, O, R, D. In the beginning was the capital W, O, R, D. And the capital R, R, D was with God. And the capital W, O, R, D was God. And then later on down in the scriptures it says, and the capital O, R, D became God. And that's Jesus Christ. The word was God, the word was with God, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. That's the Messiah. That's, that's the son of the living God. If we don't believe that, we are lost. The church has no mission. We preach this gospel because it is the power of God at work saving everyone who believes. That's Romans 1.16. We need to understand as the church, as the Mount Carmel Baptist Church, that we need to believe as transformed believers that he is the Messiah, the anointed one, and that he is the son of the living God. The single most important prerequisite from being a member of the New Testament church is being changed, being a newborn person. Peter says it like this. He says, I am a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. We need to be transformed people. Stick a pen in that for a minute. I know I've been around for now for 72 years. To God be the glory. And I have heard y'all over and over again. Y'all say stuff like this. Well, I just got to be me. God made me, and I just got to be me. That's not biblical. Maybe you are me. But when Jesus came into your life, you became a new creature. All things passed away, and all things became new. You, you. Help me, somebody. I'm glad you, you. But the, the transforming power of the Holy Spirit made you something new when you met Jesus. We sing a song, since I met Jesus. Ha! There's been a all yes, oh, such a burning <laughs> in my soul. I said transform. If the Mount Carmel Baptist Church members are to be transformed, we have to start with knowing that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. And that Jesus is the son of the living God. Anointed one. When we, when we know that, we can start believing in miracles. When we know that, we can start looking beyond ourselves for what we need and knowing that God is on our side and God will bless us with what we need. When we know that, we will worry less. I didn't say, some, sometimes when I speak, somebody take it literally, I didn't say you won't have worry. We all worry. Carla, we all worry. We do. We do. But I want you to worry less. I want worry not to get you sick. I want worry to get you out of the bed on Monday morning and go on to work. I want worry. That, I want you to stop worrying that, 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 to know that your children are going to be okay if you just pray for them every day. Peter said, I am a new creature. Turn to somebody right now and say, I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. Mm -hmm. I'm a new creature. Wilma, I'm a new creature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Old things have passed away. 
all things have become new. One of the things I am, Wendy, um, and you know this, um, I love the institution of marriage. I love it. Much as I joke about Wilma breaking me, Wilma know. If God calls her tomorrow, I'll be married next year. Teresa, say amen. Okay. I love the institution of marriage. I love having someone that I can count on and be with all the time. But when I met Wilma, I can talk about her. Anybody know marriage causes you to change some things? Any married folk up in here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma ma when you get married, some, Wendy, something has to change. Okay? I, it, it, something got to change. All right? Um, the, the vows themselves automatically say you got to change. Uh, Goldman, uh, rather than having a girlfriend in two states over and another one in two states over here, um, I got to have just one wife now. Help me. <laughs> Somebody. Just, just, just one. Okay. And, um, and if, if, if any married men in here, you realize, you have realized, if you've been married over seven years, that one is enough. Yeah. 